Tired of the everyday routine? Ever dream of a life of action and adventure? Want to get away from it all? Raconteur Radio stage presentations are designed to free you from the four walls of today for an hour of thrilling suspense, brave deed, and rollicking daring do. One day in the early 1930s, the English philologist and university professor J.R.R. R. Tolkien found a blank page and suddenly inspired wrote the words, in a hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit. And so began one of the world's most beloved books. Set in a time between the dawn of fairy and the dominion of men, tonight's presentation is the story of Bilbo Baggins, a half-pint homebody whose life is turned upside down when he joins Gandalf the Grey and 13 dwarves on a quest to recover stolen treasure. It is a journey fraught with danger. In the end, it is Bilbo alone who must face the current keeper of this horde, Smog the Magnificent, the most dreaded dragon in all of Middle-earth. But before we begin, a quick word from our sponsor. A lollipop without a stick, a ring of flavor you can lick, ring pops. More about them later. Tonight's performance features Jane Smith as furry-footed filcher Bilbo Baggins, Alex Dawson as dwarf doyen Thorin Oakenshield, son of Thrain, and assorted other characters, and myself, Michael Jarmus, as wandering wizard Gandalf the Grey, ring-corrupted river hobbit Gollum the Green, fearsome fire drake Smog. The Golden, and of course, the voice of Raconteur Radio. And now, ladies and gentlemen, without further eloquence, the curtain rises on The Hobbit. Many ages ago, when this ancient planet was not quite so ancient, long before man recorded his history, there was the time of Middle Earth when man shared his days with elves, dwarves, wizards, goblins, dragons, and hobbits. In the lands of Middle-earth, in an area known as the Shire, there was a village named Hobbiton. There, in a hole in the ground, lived a hobbit. Not a nasty, dirty, wet hole, nor a dry, bare, sandy hole. It was a hobbit hole, and that means comfort. Hello, and good morning. What do you mean, good morning? Do you mean to say you hope I have a good morning, or that it is a good morning, whether I want it to be or not, or that you feel good this morning, or that it is a morning to be good on? All of them at once, and a very fine morning for a pipe of tobacco out of doors. Sit down and have a fill of mine. Yes, yes, very pretty big puffy rings those are, but I have no time this morning to tamp, suck, and blow circles of smoke. I am looking to hire a burglar. Burglar? You've come to the wrong place. You mean you do not wish to share a great adventure? Dear me, no. We hobbits are plain, quiet folk. Adventures make one late for dinner. Good morning, dear sir. What a lot of things you use good morning for. Now you mean to get rid of me and that the morning won't be good until I move off. To think I should have lived to be good morning by Belladonna Took's son, as if I were selling buttons at the door. You knew my mother? I did. Let me see. No, I don't think I know your name. Yes, you do, Bilbo Baggins, though you don't remember that I belong to it. I'm Gandalf, and Gandalf means me. Gandalf? Not the wandering wizard? The same. Well, Gandalf, old friend of my mother, sorry to say, I don't want any adventures, thank you. But please come to tea. Why not tomorrow? Come to tea tomorrow. Until tomorrow, then. What on earth did I 
ask him to tea for. Gandalf! Bilbo Baggins, I'd like you to meet my good friend, Thorin Oakenshield. <clears throat> At your service. Please come in. I'm just setting the table for tea. Uh, best leave the door open, Mr. Baggins. The, uh, the others will be arriving soon. Others? Over the course of the next hour, arriving in bunches every ten minutes, an entire company of dwarves stamped their dusty boots and doffed their colored hoods. When Bilbo counted their cloaks, purple, blue, green, gray, hanging from his hallway hooks, thirteen, thirteen dwarves. Bilbo liked visitors, but he liked to know them before they arrived, and he preferred to ask them himself. He had a horrible thought that the seed cakes might run short, and then he, as the host, well, he knew his duty and would stick to it, however painful, he might have to go without. What in the world do all these dwarves want in Hobbiton? They have come for tea, and for supper, and for you, Burglar Baggins. Gandalf, dwarves, and burglar baggins. I say, what is all this burglar business? If you prefer, you can say expert treasure hunter. Well, yes, I do prefer that. <clears throat> we are met tonight in the house of our friend and conspirator, this most excellent hobbit. May the hair on his toes never fall out. Hear, hear. We shall soon start on our long journey, a, a journey from which some of us may never return. Never return? Our object is, I take it, well known to us? It is not well known to me. Really, really? Well, then we must inform our burglar. We seek a treasure, a treasure that is rightfully ours. Far off in the east, beyond the misty mountains in the dark forest of Mirkwood, there you will find Lonely Mountain, Long ago, this was the home of my people, and was ruled by my grandfather, king under the mountain. The dwarves of yore made mighty spells, while hammers fell like ringing bells, in places deep where dark things sleep, and hollow halls beneath the fells. Goblets they carved there for themselves, and hops of gold where no man delves. There lay they long, and many a song was sung unheard by man or elves. For ancient king and elvish lord, there many a gleaming golden hoard. They shaped and wrought, and light they caught, to hide in gems on hilt of sword. It was this wealth what brought the dragon. The pine points burned at highest height, the winds they fanned them in the nights. The fire was red, its flaming spread, the trees like torches blazed with light. And below us, in the valley, lay Dale, a town of mortal men. The bells were ringing in the dale, the men looked up with faces pale, the dragon's ire, more fierce than fire, laid low their towers and houses frail. The mountain smoked beneath the moon, the dwarves they heard the tramp of doom, they fled their hall to dying fall, beneath his feet, beneath the moon. Curses to the dragon, curses to Smog. He killed our men and stole our gold. Curses to the dragon Smog. This, then, is the adventure you've planned for me? To help you recapture your gold from this Smog? None other. Our host has fainted, I fear. Are you sure he'll do? He looks more like a grocer than a burglar. Oh. There's a lot more to him than you guess, and a good deal more than he has any idea of himself. Let us have the contract. <clears throat> to, uh, to burglar baggins, terms for your professional services. One fourteenth of total profits, traveling expenses guaranteed, funeral expenses, if necessary. Sincerely, Thorn and Company. Funeral expenses? Do you find the terms acceptable? Of course he does. But, 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 and but... so, tomorrow, Bilbo Baggins begins your greatest adventure. 
That is how they all came to start. Their pony train clopping off from Hobbiton one fine day just before May. And for a time they went along merrily, telling stories and singing songs as they rode forward. Bilbo began to feel that maybe adventures weren't such bad things after all. Though in the chaos of departure, he had left quite a few necessities behind. No hat, no stick, no pipe. Not even a pocket handkerchief. How can one survive? How did Gandalf get so far ahead of us? Well, he comes and goes at will. He is a wizard, you know. Oh, bother burgling and everything to do with it. I miss my dry, warm hole. Always remember, Bilbo, when your heart wants lifting, think of pleasant things. Eggs and bacon, a good full pipe, my garden at twilight. Cakes! We'll camp here, men. Find yourselves a dry patch to sleep on. Oh, bless me, Thorin. Look. Just beyond that rock. Trolls! Where the deuce is Gandalf? Left us again. Just when a wizard would have been most useful. Well, no matter. We have an expert burglar with us. What have trolls to do with burgling? Well, we could use some of their meat. Oh, I say. Burglar, do your burgling. Mort yesterday, Mort today, and blimey, if it don't look like Mort again tomorrow, never a blinking bit of man flesh have we had for long enough. You've had a village and an off at least since we come down from the mountain. How much more do you want? Hello, what we got here? Help, let me down. Oh, stop that. Let's cook him and find out. Ah, he wouldn't make a mouthful. Perhaps there are more of him around about and we might make a pie. Thorin! Dwarves! I'm done for! Run for it! Dwarves? Dwarves? Now that's a supper. Mince them fine and boil them, says I. No, no good boiling them. We ain't got no water. Besides, I like eating them raw. Dawn take you all and be stone to you. The sun! How did morning come so soon? Stone! Stone me hands! Me legs, all of it! All of it turning to a... Ah. Where's that bumbling burglar? Lucky number indeed. Over here. Come, see what I've found. Oh, not bad, burglar, for your first attempt. Oh, it was nothing, actually. Suitedly fine blades. Considering they were made by trolls. They don't seem like trolls' swords to me. Probably stolen. See these strange runes? Whatever are runes? Ancient writing. Mine has them too. Can you make them out, Gandalf? I'm not familiar with these letters. Well, whoever made them, we've got them now. I say, dwarf company, each of you, pick out a weapon. Then carry the gold outside and, and bury it for our return trip. Take that, smog, you filthy worm. Uh, I see you've also claimed a sword. Yes, just a dagger, actually, but well suited to one of my size. Hurry, men. We must be on our way. Hold. Hold. It's time for you to have this. And what may that be? This is a map of Lonely Mountain. Presented to me years ago by your father. What? Why did it not come to me? To me, the rightful heir? I've chosen my own time to hand it over. Oh, I do love maps. I have quite a collection. Ah, uh, I remember the mountain well enough without this. Indeed. And how do you intend to enter Smog's chambers? Through the main gate, as a house guest? You'd be ashes before you took your seventh step. Oh, see, look, this hand points from these runes to, bless my soul, a secret entrance, a hidden passage to the lower halls. Excellent, burglar. I'm really quite good with maps. Let me see. Oh, uh, yeah, quite correct. But has it remained a secret all these years? 
It's too small for smog to use. It's covered by a door made to look exactly like the side of the mountain. Here is the key. Thorin, keep it safe. Of course I will. But if the secret door is hidden, how do we find it? The map doesn't tell. It does and it doesn't. You will understand in time. Behold, at last, Rivendell, the hidden valley of the elves where Elrond dwells. See the lights. Simply enchanting. Things that are good to have and days that are good to spend are not much to tell about or listen to, while things that are uncomfortable and gruesome make a rather good tale. So we won't say much, only that they stayed long in that good valley, 14 days at least, and they found it hard to leave. My dear Elrond, your hospitality is magnificent. The food, the wine, the stories, the music. But we've much to accomplish. Might you have a look at these troll swords? Yes, yes, of course. Well, well firstly, these blades are, are not troll make. They are old swords of the High Elves of the West, my kin. They were made for the Goblin Wars. This sword, Thorn. The runes name Orchrist, the Goblin Cleaver. And mine? Glamdring, the foe hammer. Keep them well, and may they soon cleave goblins again. Now, show me your map. I have it here. Hmm. Something strange. Let's see. Yes, yes, indeed. These are moon letters here, see? What are moon letters? Runes that can only be seen when the moon shines behind them. They give directions for finding the secret door. Stand by the gray stone when the thrush knocks and the last light of the setting sun will shine upon the keyhole. The next morning was midsummer morning, as fair and fresh as could be dreamed, and they rode away amid songs of farewell and good speed and with hearts ready for more adventure. Long days after they climbed out of the valley, leaving Rivendell miles behind, they were still going up and up. It had gotten bitter cold, and the wind came shrill among the rocks. You seem down in spirits, Bilbo. Oh, it's just... Summer is getting on down below, and haymaking is going on, and picnics. They will be harvesting and blackberrying and making wine and jam. Lightning splintered on the peaks. The rocks shivered, and great crashes split the air and rolled and tumbled into every cave and hollow. And the darkness was filled with overwhelming noise and sudden light. In the flashes, they saw that across the valley, the stone giants were out. They were hurling rocks at one another and catching them and tossing them down into the darkness, where they smashed them up the trees far below, breaking into bits with a bang. The ponies whinnied with fright. This way! Shelter! A dry cave! Have you thoroughly explored it? Dark things lurk here in these mountains where no king rules. Yes, yes, it isn't that big, and, well, it doesn't go very far back. Well, this will do, but no fires. We will have to get by with a change into dry clothes. Get some sleep, men. Tomorrow will again be bitter cold and very long. Just what a hobbit wants to hear before he drifts off the bitter cold. And where's Gandalf? Gone again? Someplace warm where only wizards can go? Oh, I wish I was a wizard. And so they dropped off one by one, except Bilbo, who could not go to sleep for a long while. And when he did, he had very nasty dreams. He dreamed that a crack in the wall at the back of the cave got bigger and opened wider and wider. And he was very afraid, but could not call out or do anything but lie and look. And then he woke. Oh, dear. It's not a dream. It's true. The ponies. 
a crack. Jeeves, wake up, wake up! Huh? Huh? Goblins, wake up, men! The goblins are upon us! Yes, goblins, six to each dwarf and two even for Bilbo, and they were all grabbed and carried through the crack before you could say Tinder and Flint. Now, goblins are cruel, wicked, and bad-hearted. They make no beautiful things, but axes, swords, daggers, tongs, and various instruments of torture, they make very well. And soon, the company of dwarves found themselves in the great goblin hall, surrounded by all such things. Who are these miserable persons? Wait, I recognize that sword on your hip. Oh, Chris, the goblin cleaver! Murderers! Elf friends! We shall slash and gnash you, beat you and bite you, then throw you in deep, dark holes full of snakes! You will never see the light of day again! Stop! No! I know that sword too! Glandering the foe hammer! We are lost! We are doomed! It's Gandalf! Good old Gandalf! Follow me, quickly! Through here, follow me! Wait for me! Oh dear, my stride is not as great as yours. Oh, please, wait for me! Soon, Bilbo was far behind, and when he came to a fork in the passageway, he chose poorly, or perhaps wisely, and tumbled down and down away from the dwarves and Gandalf, but also away from the goblins. When he reached the bottom and opened his eyes, he wondered if he had it was just as dark as with them shut. His ears were filled with the sound of dripping, and he could feel the wet of air on his hands and cheek and feet. Hello? Gandalf? Thorin? Dory and Nori? Oin and Gloin? Anyone? Hello? What's this? Something cold, small. A ring? No time to look at it now. I've got to find a way out of this terrible place. But a nice souvenir to show the folks back home if I ever get home. Where are the others, I wonder? Am I the only one left? Oh, I wish I had my pipe. Or at least a match. If not to light my pipe, then to punch a tiny hole in all this darkness. My troll sword, luminous, glowing like a torch. So, it's an elvish blade too. Oh dear, an underground lake, probably full of slimy things with big, bulging, blind eyes. There are strange things living in the pools and lakes in the hearts of mountains. Fish whose fathers swam in centuries ago and never swam out. And other things more slimy than fish. There are things living here unbeknownst to even the goblins who have carved their homes down deep in the tunnels and caves. Things that have sneaked in from outside to lie up in the dark. Down here by the black water lived a creature known as Gollum. My precious, it is my precious, hello, my precious, bless and splashes, food for my precious. Yes, scaly, spooling things that slither and writhe, thick as a dragon's neck, all weedy and beardy like barnacles. No, stop that, Bilbo. Think happy thoughts. Pleasant things, eggs and bacon, spoons, all polished, warm muffins and sweet butter. Hello? Hello? I say there, hello? Hello? What is that noise, my precious? My precious does not know. Oh, my. Who are you? Bless us, my precious. What is it, my precious? I am Mr. Bilbo Baggins. I've lost my dwarves, my wizard, and my way. A tasty morsel it would make us. Back! 
I'm armed with an elvish blade. That's better. Let's keep a nice few furry foot lengths between us. Perhaps you know the way out? How about we sit here and chat with it a bit, see, my precious? It likes riddles. Do I like riddles? Well, yes, after a fashion. Ah, it cannot be seen, cannot be felt, cannot be heard, cannot be smelt. It lies behind stars and under the hills, and whatever the size, empty holes it fills. It comes first and follows after, ends life, kills laughter. Easy. The answer is all around us, dark. Does it guess easy? It must have a game with us. If Precious asks and it doesn't answer, we eat it. Oh, I say. But if it asks us and we doesn't answer, then we shows it the way out. It seems I have no choice. My Precious. We make the first riddle. Voiceless it cries, wingless flutters, toothless bites, mouthless mutters. Can it guess the answer? Have a moment. Is it nice, my precious? Is it juicy, gooey, yucky? Is it scrumptious, crunchable? Wind. Wind is the answer. Now my turn. A box without hinges, key or lid, yet golden treasure inside is hid. Key or lid, golden treasure inside. Well, come on, what about it? Give us a chance, my precious. Eggs is. Exes it is. Oh, bother. Us now. Now us, my precious. All things it devours. Birds, bees, trees, flowers. Gnaws iron, bites steel. Grinds hard stones to meal. Slays king, ruins town. Beats the high mountain down. Well, interesting. Yes. Now, let me see. Does it answer? What does it answer? Just a moment now. My precious, will it taste delicious? It will, it will. Give me some time. What? What did you say? I said time. Time. Ah Whatever is the matter? It guesses. Time. Time is the answer. It is? Oh, I knew it all along. That's an old one. Well, fun's fun. Now, couldn't we get out of here? It's got to ask us another riddle, my precious. Blast. I can't think of another one. Ask. Ask. Oh, very well. What have I got in my pocket? Not fair. Not fair to ask my precious what it's got in its nasty little pocket says. I'm sorry. That's my riddle. And if you can't guess it, you lose and show me out. It must give us three guesses, my precious. Three guesses. Very well, guess away. <laughs> Hanses. Wrong. Guess again. <sighs> Knife. Wrong. Last guess. Come on, I'm waiting. Uh, string. String or, or nothing. Both wrong. You lose.
My precious losers! Now, please, I want to go. You must show me the way out. Did we say so, precious? Show the nasty little baggins the way out. Yes, yes. But first, my precious shows it. His something pretty. You wish to show me something? My birthday present. Well, hurry up. My precious finds a ring on his birthday long ago. A golden ring, a magic ring. We must get my precious birthday present from its hiding place. Ah! 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 Bless my soul. Where is it? Where, my golden ring, my magic ring. Lost, lost it is, lost, lost. Crush us and crush us. My ring lost. Well, so am I, and I want to get unlost. And I won the game. My precious remembers. He wears it before, and he drops it on the shore. Mm. Oh, he does carry on. Come on already. You never guessed my last question, and a deal is a deal. Never guessed. Shh. What it got in its pockets is? Curse it. Curse the Baggins. He found it. My ring, my birthday present. <laughs> a change had come over Gollum. No longer did he seem like a froggy bit of something that could be held back with a simple wave of Bilbo's blade. With a hideous burbling roar, he charged at Bilbo, and something other than Bilbo, something stronger, greater, seemed to push Bilbo's hand into his pocket. The ring felt very cold as it quietly slipped onto his finger. In a moment, Gollum was on him. But before Bilbo could hold up his arm or duck his head or raise his sword, Gollum passed by, taking no notice of him. What could it mean? Bless my soul. I'm... I'm invisible. The ring? Yes, most definitely. My precious will find it, will find it. The Baggins, my precious, will crush it and smash it. Where is it? Where is it? It is Trixie. It says it doesn't know the way out, but it knows the way in, my precious. It must know a way out. It's off for the back door. My precious must make haste to the back door, to the back door. How convenient. Well... Follow the leader. Where is it? Where is this scrumptious crunchable? It's not here, my precious. It's gone. Gone, my precious. It takes the ring and takes all its fat meat with it. Ta-ta, my fishy little friend. Thief! Thief, Baggins! We hates it! Hates it forever! Then Bilbo was out in the light, his waistcoat torn, leaping down the stone steps like a goat. Bilbo had escaped. He wandered on out of the valley over its edge and down the slopes beyond. He had just made up his mind that it was his duty to go back into the horrible tunnels and look for his friends when he heard voices. Soon he was in the middle of the dwarf company, which was where he finally took off his ring. Bless me how they jumped. We had to fight our way through the goblin guard. How is it they didn't see you? Oh, well, the art of burgling is really, you know, the art of being unobtrusive, invisible, so to speak. Your story has the ring of truth. Yes, it rings true. You need say no more. We'd best get a move on. There are still goblins about. Oh, bother. More mountains. No. Don't you see? The sun is setting in the west, behind the mountains. We're on the other side, at the edge of the land beyond. As they went on, the shadows deepened about them. Still, they marched along as fast as they were able, and all the while the forest gloom got heavier and silence deeper. 
There was no wind to bring even a sea sighing to the branches. Can't we stop for a bit? My toes are all bruised and bent, and my legs ache, and my stomach is wagging like an empty sack. Just a bit, Father. Wolves! The wolves! What should we do? Escaping goblins, only to be eaten by wolves! Up in the trees! Up in the trees! Quick! In a minute, there was a whole pack of wild, wolfy wargs all around the tree and leaping up the trunk with eyes blazing and tongues hanging out. Then suddenly, goblins riding up astride still more wolves. The goblins built a fire around the tree, feeding it with leaves and dead branches and bracken. Fly away, little birds, fly away if you can. Fifteen birds in five fir trees. The feathers were fanned in a fiery breeze. Sing, sing, little birds, why don't you sing? Burn, burn, tree and fern. Shrivel and scorch our fizzling torch to the light of the night for our delight. <laughs> oh, Lord of Eagles, hear me. <coughs> the Lord of the Eagles could see a rabbit moving on the ground a mile below even in the moonlight. And so he had no trouble seeing the fire and the wolves and even Gandalf the Grey waving his staff in the top of the tree. The great birds flew to the treetops and seized Bilbo and Gandalf and the thirteen dwarves who were scrambling up now as far as ever they dared to go. Soon they were all high up in the cool dark of the navy blue night, rising all the time. My arms! My legs! My legs! But what will they do with us? Drop us to our deaths? Who knows? Who knows? But but they brought us a far distance with no dropping. Behold! Behold the river of Wilderland below. By thunder! They're taking us to the edge of Mirkwood Forest to, to dash us against those rocks. I know it! Oh, great Lord of the Eagles, we are eternally grateful for your gallant rescue. May the wind under your wings be forever fair, and the sky in which you fly forever blue. So, this is Mirkwood. Yes. Terrible place, if I remember. And dangerous. Now, now. The map shows the safest path. Follow it closely, straight through the forest. Don't stray off the track. If you do, you will never get out. You speak as if you weren't going with us. I'm not. I have a pressing business way south. Oh, no. He can't mean it. What will we do without Gandalf? Don't leave us, wizard. We need you. I'm sending Mr. Baggins with you. That should be enough. Mr. Baggins? The burglar? Me? I'm no equal to a wizard. Nonsense. You are a lucky number, and you'll soon find out there's more about you than you guess. You, sir, will be my surrogate, my replacement, so to say. Here is paper and a marker. Keep a strict log of your journey, so I may study it when we meet again and point out your missteps. I can only do my best. Then that, my friend, will have to suffice. We pause now for a brief word about our sponsor, Ring Pops. Ring Pops are a brand of fruit-flavored lollipops manufactured by Tops. They are in the form of a wearable plastic ring with a large hard candy jewel and come in an assortment of flavors. The first Ring Pop was produced in 1979 by one Frank Richards, who invented the treat as a way to help his daughter kick her thumb-sucking habit. Since its creation, tons of flavors have passed through the Ring Pop pantheon, and today you can find Pops in blue raspberry, strawberry, cherry, watermelon, lime, grape, and apple. Special ring pops are made for some holidays. Easter ring pops use the traditional plastic ring, but replace the gem-shaped hard candy with chicks or bunnies. Tops recently launched ring pop gummies, a wearable and edible gummy version of the candy. Ring pops are not to be confused with whistle pops, a hard candy confection with a hole in it, which when blown into would produce a whistling sound, and are marketed with the tagline, plays real music. 
And now, without further ado, part two of The Hobbit. To Gandalf, as per your instructions, I'm keeping this log of our journey through Mirkwood Forest. I shall make good use of it someday as a basis for my memoirs, which I intend to call There and Back Again, A Hobbit's Holiday. The days are terrible and the nights are impossible, for we are hungry and thirsty. The berries which grow here are hideous. Everything about these woods is unpleasant. I awoke the next morning to a scratching sound. My friends were gone, and before me stood the most hideous thing I had yet to see. Fortunately, I had my elven blade. Take that! Somehow, killing the giant spider all alone by himself in the dark without the help of wizards or the dwarves or anyone else made a great difference to Mr. Baggins. He felt a much different person and much fiercer and bolder. Returning his sword to his belt, he said, Now, I will give you a name. I shall call you Sting. The rest of the morning I spent seeking my companions, and I found them finally in a place as black and terrible as a patch of midnight that had never been cleared away. I crept along as cleverly as I could, slipping on my ring, which is why the spiders neither saw nor heard me coming. They'll make fine eating. When they've hung a bit. <laughs> Old fat spider spinning in a tree. Old fat spider can't see me. Attacup, attacup. Won't you stop your spinning and look at me? Old Tom Noddy. Oh, big buddy. Old Tom Noddy can't spy me. Attacup, attacup. Attacup, attacup. Down you drop. You'll never catch me up your tree. Now, no spider has ever liked being called Attercop, and Tom Noddy, of course, is insulting to anybody. The whole lot of them came hurrying after the hobbit, hairy legs waving, nippers and spinners snapping, eyes popping, full of froth and rage. They followed Bilbo into the forest, then, quieter than a mouse, he stole back to free the dwarves. Climb down, my friends. I shall hold the spiders off if I can. I know the spider's poisons have made you weak, but you must move quickly. Keep together, and I will rejoin you later. Lazy love and crazy cop are weaving webs to wind me. I am far more sweet than other meat, but still they cannot find me. Uh, keep singing, keep singing, and we'll find you. We will eat you and leave your skin hanging in the tree. Keep my singing for stinging! And he did. He hacked their legs and stabbed their fat bodies. The spiders spluttered and hissed out horrible curses, but they became mortally afraid of Sting and soon gave it up and skittered back to their dark colony. Away! Away, retreat! We spiders are no mad for I joined my companions, still sluggish from the poison, but none the worse for wear. In the distance loomed lonely mountain. I'd come far and through many adventures to see it. And now I did not like the look of it at all. Within hours, we'd reached the human settlement called Lake Town. A precise, if not too imaginative, name for the village was actually built on the surface of Long Lake. The descendants of the men of Dale still dared to dwell and do business in the shadow of Old Smog's Mountain. Bard the guardsman, was a gracious and convivial man, and we were welcomed warmly. We were fed, fattened, given supplies, 
and two weeks later found us nearing the end of our journey. And chances were it would be a very horrible end indeed. That smell! I've not smelled dragon before. And while the smog slept inside, we spent our days searching for that elusive secret door. And so, Gandalf, while I wait, I inscribe the final pages of your log. My only companion is an annoying bird cracking snails. Stand by the grey stone when the thrush knocks, and the last light of the setting sun will shine upon the keyhole. Oh my goodness! Wake up! Wake up! It's happening! By thunder! There it is! Thorin, before it's gone again, use your key! Well, here we are. But what now? Well, now is the time for our Mr. Baggins to perform the service for which he was included in our company. You must earn your reward. We do have a contract. You think it's my job to go in first? I've already gotten you out of two messes. Not in the original bargain. Oh, bother. Fine. I'll go. And who will come with me? Any of you? I see. Well, you are the burglar. Go down and burgle something. Now you're in for it. At last, Bilbo Baggins, why are you here? You've no use for dragon treasures. Feel the worm's heat, Mr. Baggins. A few more steps and you shall see the old dragon smog at last. You can still turn back, you know. But to go on, to take those steps, that would be the bravest of all moments. Whatever happens afterwards is nothing. Yes, here is where you fight your real battle, Mr. Bilbo Baggins. Do you go back? Bilbo had heard tell and sing of dragon hordes before, but the splendor, the lust, the glory of such treasure had never yet come home to him, and it glowed bright even in this dark cave. His heart was filled with a desire of dwarves, and he gazed frozen in awe at the gold beyond price and count, almost forgetting the frightful beast that guarded it, holding it close, a suckling litter, the scaly coil of its neck and tail against the tight, cobbled drum of its armored belly. Shh! Oh, do be quiet, little bird! Bilbo grasped a large jug cup, as heavy as he could carry. It was then that Smog's snoring changed its note. Well, thief, which is no doubt what you are. I smell you, feel your air, hear your breath. Come along, help yourself. There's plenty. Thank you, oh, Smog the Magnificent. But I did not come for presents. I only wish to uh, have a look at you and see if you are truly as great as tales say. I did not believe them. And do you now? They fall utterly short of reality. Oh, smog, the biggest and greatest of calamities. You have nice manners for a thief. And a liar. 
You know me, but I don't remember smelling you before. Who are you? And where do you come from? I come from under the hill, and under the hill and over the hills, my paths led, and through the air, I am he that walks unseen. You make riddles? What is your name? I am the lucky number, the web cutter, the spider stinger. Lovely titles. I am the guest of eagles, the game winner, the ring wearer. You are one of those miserable, tub-thumping lake men, aren't you? You and your town shall pay dearly for this intrusion, so the lake men would steal my treasure. Wait! It is not gold alone that brought me hither. Be done with your riddles. What else brought you, lake man? Revenge. Revenge? Surely you realize that your success has made you some bitter enemies. Revenge? You? Ha! I am smog. I kill what I wish. I am strong. Strong, strong. My armor is like tenfold shields. My teeth and claws are like swords. The shock of my tail, a thunderbolt. My wings, a hurricane. And my breath, death. Well, well, where are your riddles now? Very, very impressive. Uh, however, I have always understood that dragons were soft underneath, vulnerable, uh, especially in the region of the uh, chest. You have heard wrong. I am armored both above and below. Well, I don't know about that. Well, then, I shall show you. Look, what say you to this? Rare and wonderful, eh? Dazzling, marvelous, perfect, flawless, staggering. Except, well, how to say it? Just a small thing, really, but, well, there's a patch in the hollow of your left breast as as bare as a snail out of its shell. What's that? More riddles? No, my riddling is done. W what are you, a talking bird? I really must not detain your magnificence any longer. Sorry you could not find me, but a fine burglar takes expert catching. Burglar? Burglar! Thief! Fire! Murderer! It's the burglar! Three cheers for Bilbo Baggins! Thank you, but I'd appreciate a more pragmatic salute. In other words, extinguish me! Oh, there we go, there we go! Always glad to help a friend. I can't tell you how grateful I am. Well, never mind all that. What did you burgle? This! Wait, what's that? Earthquake? The dragon has come! The dragon hit to the secret passage, man! It's our only chance! Lucky her! Thieving lake man, your people shall see my vengeance, and luck will be something you will never know again! The lake people are doomed unless... The dragon turned and dived swooping lower than he had yet, his belly glittering gold with armored scales, but not in one place. In that one place it was dull and gray. Having been advised by Bilbo's thrush, Bard let fly his black arrow, forged under the mountain many years ago, and it sped straight for that unprotected patch. In Smog's belly it vanished, barbed shaft and feather. So fierce was its flight. With a scream that deafened men, felled trees, split stone, smog twisted in the air, and crashed from on high to the water in ruin. 
A vast steam leapt up, white in the sudden dark under the moon. There was a hiss, and then... Silence. And that was the end of Smog. Meanwhile, in Lonely Mountain... There is only one king under the mountain, and I am he, Thorin. Now, men, there is much to be done. We must catalog our wealth. Join the fun, burglar. Part of this is yours. What if Smog returns? Uh, he's been gone for a week now. Found greener pastures, no doubt. Has this wealth made you mad? Mm. We must find our way out of this mountain. We must find our way and see for ourselves if he's gone. And quickly, according to this map, the main gate lies in this direction. Finally. Whew. I was born of the mountain, but the outside night air does me good. Bless my soul. What are they? Is the, is the entire valley floor populated by giant fireflies? Not fireflies. Fires! Campfires! Nonsense! Only an army would need that many fires. It's barred. It seems his people have made him king. Well, couldn't have happened to a better chap. Part of this is his, too, and I dare say he needs it. His town was destroyed by smog. Now, the fortune is ours, and it belongs to dwarves alone. It wouldn't be yours if Smog still lived. The price of the goods and, and the assistance that we received from the lake men, we will fairly pay in due time. But he dares approach me with an army at his side? Nothing, nothing will we give, not even a, a loaf's worth under threat of force. And so Thorin met Bard on the field of battle. The days passed slowly and wearily. So grim had Thorin become that even if they wished, the others would not have found fault with his stubborn stance. But indeed, most of them shared his mind. Bilbo, of course, disapproved of the whole turn of affairs. This breastplate is deucedly uncomfortable. I'm certain to get a rash. Oh, that armor was forged in the foundries of my grandfather. Wear it proudly, and it will carry you to victory. Confusticate and be bothered, Victory. My only hope is to be taken prisoner as quickly as possible. Those are the words of a coward. The coward who flushed out small. The coward who saved you time and time again. The coward who always went forward while you cringed behind. Well, uh, you don't see us cringing now, do you? This is madness. Fourteen against hundreds, and yet you march off to certain destruction as merrily as if you were on your way to a tea party. Ah, your kind will never understand, Hobbit. This is war. War! Another army approaches from the northeast. An army of our kind. An army of dwarves. My cousin Dane from the Iron Hills. Ha! Now we are not outnumbered. Onward! To war! Wait. Wait, who's that old man on the battlefield? Move, you old fool! Old fool? Gandalf! Halt! I would speak with the kings. Bard, the king of men. Elsgaroth, the king of elves. And Thorin, the king of dwarves. Dread has come upon you all. An army of goblins with claim to the treasure comes from the north. Behold, they ride upon wolves. Goblins scaled the mountain, and already many were on the slopes above the gate, and elsewhere a black tide poured down to attack the spurs from above. The armies of man and elf and dwarf joined together. They fought well, but though the wild wargs were scattered and the goblins piled in heaps till Dale was dark and hideous with their corpses, there were too many, and Thorin and Bard could not pierce their ranks. Victory now vanished from hope, but then... The gray clouds were torn by a great wind, and the red sunset slashed the west. Seeing the sudden gleam in the gloom, Bilbo looked round and saw a sight that made his heart leap. The eagles! The eagles are coming! At that moment, something smote Bilbo heavily on the helm, and he fell with an armored crash and knew no more. When Bilbo finally came to, 
he was alone. His body was as chilled as stone, but his head burned with fire. Hours passed, maybe days. Then a shadow, a shape. Difficult to discern, but tall, with a staff and a pointed cap. Hello? Hello there. Is that you, Gandalf? A voice speaks among the rocks. Bilbo, take off your ring so that I might see you. We have looked for you long days. Are you hurt? A nasty knock on the head. What happened? We won. Of our original company, how many are left? Seven. And Thorin? Soon there will be only six. Come, I will take you to him. Farewell, good thief. I wish to part in friendship and take back my words at the gate. There are many words I would take back also. Does it take this to make us see each other? Oh, Thorin. You are no coward, my friend. <clears throat> I am sorry I so named you. This is not important. <clears throat> and I... <clears throat> and I was wrong. <clears throat> you did understand war. It was I who did not. Until now. Farewell, King Under the Mountain. <clears throat> Child of the kindly West. <clears throat> I have come to know you. And I have come to know if more of us valued your ways, food and cheer above hoarded gold, <clears throat> it would be a merrier world. But sad or merry, I must leave it now. <coughs> Farewell, my friend. Farewell, Thorin. You take only two tiny bags of gold home with you. Your share was greater. It's all my pony could carry, and it's more than I'll ever need. But you have other prizes. The ring. Oh, yes, I'll keep it as a souvenir in a glass box on the mantel. And so the prophecies of old have come true. Smog is gone. The goblins driven away, the dwarves and elves live in peace, and the men thrive, multiply, and build a civilization. Prophecies? What? I had a hand in all that. You disbelieve the prophecies because you helped bring them about? You don't really suppose that all your adventures and escapes were managed by mere luck? Just for your sole benefit? You're a very fine person, Mr. Baggins. I'm very fond of you. But you are only quite a little fellow in the wide world, after all. Thank goodness. Yes, you will return to your home. Place your souvenir ring on your mantle. Publish your story, which you believe has come to its end. What do you mean? Believe has come to an end. It has, hasn't it? Oh, Bilbo Baggins, if you really understood that ring, as someday members of your family not yet born will, then you'd realize that this story has not ended, but is only beginning. Again, this presentation of The Hobbit is a production of Raconteur Radio. To find out more about Raconteur Radio or to join the Raconteur Radio email list, 
visit RacconteRadio.com. That's www.RacconteRadio.com. I'm Michael Jarmus. Thanks for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. And remember, folks, ring pops, a lollipop without a stick, a ring of flavor you can lick. Accept no substitutes. Be safe, be well, and good night. Thank you.